What's happening, guys? I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. This is another Sunday video for the 29th and the week ahead. We are going to be into May by midweek. Uh, this is take two. I forgot how much I love doing these, um, and I forgot to share my screen when I was talking, so uh, I wasted 30 minutes, but uh, that's all right, and... Uh, as you guys know, I haven't done this in a while, and I hope that you guys are enjoying, you know, Chris. I think Chris has been a, a really great asset to the Sunday videos. Uh, if you've paid any attention, you know, if you if I just think about the ones that I was on, you had the Tesla uh, trade into the 150s. You had the FCX, uh, the, the copper breakout. You had the Mara um, trade. We talked about the uh, options trade on that. We talked about SMCI. We talked about NVIDIA. And uh, all of those trades that uh, kind of came to fruition. So um, that is the goal with these things, uh, you know, on, on Sunday video. My goal is just to kind of put ideas in front of you and hopefully, you know, they, they turn into something for you uh, for the week ahead. And if it's not ideas, it's concepts, something that could potentially make you a little bit better of a, a, a trader for uh, the week ahead and, and the, the year ahead. Right. So uh, and then obviously he's got. Uh, Judah on, which uh, does more of the, the bigger picture kind of swing looks, which I find uh, beneficial, especially if, uh, if if our paths cross on a particular name. Uh, and then he starts to fire off different sort of uh, more macro level, something on the daily chart. I pay attention because it might not be something that I, I was really focused on, but he's focused on, uh, all right, we're coming into some major resistance here. That could be one of two things. One being a huge reject and it fades back off. And I want to know. Or if it starts to consolidate at the level and form a new base, then we could be on that stage two of a, a major breakout. So uh, I find that beneficial from Judah. And then obviously you've got Stan that's been on, which, uh, you know, me and him cross paths every single day. Right. So he's a small cap trader. He also has the extension of, of more of a mid large cap type action, too. Uh, but for the most part, me and him trade very, very similar on small caps, being very patient I'm um, not trying to find the top. You know, if we do trade front side, it's a little bit less of uh, of size. But for the most part, just being patient, let everybody else figure it out, get chopped up, get bent, and then start to put, kind of put on, on size. Um, and uh, so anyway, um, as I said, I, I do hope that you are enjoying Sunday video. We always are looking for feedback. You know, do you want more styles of trading? Do you want uh, explanation of, of particular topics, um, particular guest, you know, special guests that you'd like to see on there, things like that? Um, you, uh, hopefully you guys have seen uh, Trading Takes, which we've had some some great guests on, you know, and, and the idea here is to, to hopefully find you a, a community. Whether IU is that community for you or not, it doesn't necessarily matter to, to me. Um, and that's why we have, you know, people from all different communities uh, you know, on trading takes. We even have people from different communities adding value and doing webinars in IU. You know, I don't care if you go to them. All I want you to do is find your home. I want you to find the, the type of uh, trader that you are. And if that's, if, if I can be part of that journey, then, you know, that's a, that's a win. I don't care if you're in IU long-term or not. Um, the, the idea here and the idea with uh, trading uh, it, it, you know, being part of a community is to kind of find your people, just like Lance preaches, you know, having your pod. Right. And I never really put a name on it, but I've got my particular kind of, you know, couple little groups, people that are way smarter than me in different certain areas, but also people that I can provide value with, with what I'm good at. And, uh, they respect that and I respect them for what they're good at. And so when you, you put all that stuff together, you know, just think about how much more knowledge you you have, uh, you know, in that particular pod or community or whatever the case may be. So anyway, uh, yeah, definitely let us know what you're thinking. Let us know, uh, you know, any things that you'd like to see um, on on future Sunday videos. Um, so uh, anyway, I wanted to go over a couple things real quick. Um, one of them was going to be three DAS tools, but uh, it's hard to kind of actually share um, because I got to pull up a window and then another window. So I'm actually going to probably just record my screen, uh, and do that maybe later this, this week. And just uh, a couple new things that I've added to, um, you know, my charts that have, uh, really been a, a, a good game changer, you know, just a, a good visual reminder of, of certain things. Um, 
And uh, the reason I was going to talk about that and go through that first was just because you'll see some of these lines that I, I go over um, on the first part of this scan. So my goal is to go over some of the most recent uh, trades that I've uh, taken as far as uh, I'm posting all the, the entries and exits because I already have. You guys can go back and see the way that I traded these, whether it's on Twitter or just look at the images that I posted in the lounge, uh, which is where I post, uh, you know, my my trades each and every single day. Um, so at any rate, what I wanted to do is talk about lines and, and how I use them. And one of the features that I was going to tell you about was the global trend line. I've discussed it on uh, in, in IU. I have posted a couple screenshots of, of how to do that. Um, there was a couple of other new features lately, limit up, limit down, that I had asked Dash Trader to add, which I think you guys will find beneficial. Uh, but then there's a few other features that uh, I've I've been looking at recently and, and definitely have helped me with, uh, you know, some of the some of the trades that I've made. Um, but uh, this IBRX, I just want you guys to focus the congestion area over here, 580s, and then obviously the support level over here in the 620s range, right? The support level becomes a little bit of resistance. We're still pre-market. We come back down, test that prior level of support. Starts to come back up towards that 620s into 930. Typically, what I want is a looking left situation into uh, pre-market resistance. Either it's going to clear out that 620s level and fail, or it's going to stuff into that level. Stuff being 620, bunch of volume goes off, no movement on the offer, and then just ends up slamming down. Um, so... Good opportunity there. And what I want to, to also see is how you can use this information, keeping that line on your chart and how it actually added value over here for the breakout on uh, Friday where, you know, it busted through that level. You want to assume that it's going to have trouble with it. You want to assume that it's going to fail. But when it doesn't and it starts to, con you know, consolidate and actually hold and accumulate at 620s, that becomes your new base. And that is a nice long versus that 580 level, right? So the same kind of situation, flash forward, CLSK, we uh, we traded this one. This one should look familiar from uh, the, the preparation the other day. And looking kind of left, you see that there's a point of congestion over here. Pretty much has been peaked since. So we want to assume that 21 is going to have trouble. doesn't mean step in front of it, let it blow out, let it get other people on the wrong side, chop them up, let them... Uh, you know, exit. And then as it starts to come back, uh, go ahead and uh, look for that opportunity versus the highs. Um, sometimes I might put on a feeler and sometimes the first question is, well, what's your risk? If that's your question, then just wait, just wait for it to be under key levels. And then you have your risk, risk off a of high days, risk off the prior level of resistance. But if you're putting on a feeler to kind of get into the position, it might be five, 10, 20 percent of the, 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 the trade. That's not something to say, all right, I'm going to stop at X. It's just you're, you're putting it on your radar. And, and the, the real reason is how many times do you flip through charts and then you lose it off radar, right? And it worked perfect. It did exactly what you expected. But guess what? Something else shiny was moving and you flip the chart and it's gone forever. Had you had a starter, it's still in your portfolio. It's still on your screen and your positions monitor. And you're going to keep an eye on it. That's the point. If you need an answer of where that stop is, then just wait for the failed follow through setup to confirm. Um, and same thing you can see here on this uh, Mara trade, a very similar situation. And we had that same kind of clear out off the open, looking left, as well as Bitcoin agreement. Moving ahead, CZOO. Um, you, again, keeping your trend lines on your chart, 13 level, you get a nice good reminder looking left from the prior day. And again, now we're starting to get lower highs uh, on these clear out moves. Um, it's also important to kind of pay attention where the congestion is, the 1115, excuse me, 1150 areas, as well as 1020s. What's good about this is later on, as you might see it pop up one day, and let's just say it fades off to, you know, sevens and you're not really paying attention and it ramps up nine, 10, you're immediately going to see that 10, 20, likely an area of, uh, of resistance. So just keep that in mind and we'll see what happens with, uh, with that one. Uh, but, uh, really good trades there and uh, great opportunities. Hopefully you guys participated in that as well. 
AIRE, same situation. The key here is to how soon can you identify where that channel is, right? And the sooner you can identify where that channel is, the less you're going to get tossed around. If you're starting to position into 160s to the point where you're going to blow out at 180s, that's a problem. I never want to have to make a decision at 180, right? I want, I, and, and by that, I mean, I never want to be forced out. I never want to have to exit. I want to make that decision on my own, right? And a lot of people don't give themselves enough room. A lot of people get too aggressive down towards the, the 160s and then they panic into the 180s when all along we know that that level needs to clear out before it starts to head lower. So typically, if I want to size into a position, I'll remain relatively light until we have multiple fails or at least a couple attempts. Retest towards 160 fail, retest towards 160 fail, and then starts to fade off. Otherwise, how do you know you're not just slamming into one little dip and rip candle, right? So MTC was very similar. This was another layup type trade from this week that you guys saw. Um, that was the trade that I uh, took into, uh, you know, sort of the, the morning move. Um, we had a, a nice uh, after hours move and it closed up towards the 390s, open, came back up towards that level. And that was right at the open. So we pretty much peaked out right into that ideal exhaustion range. And that's what I call this level is the ideal exhaustion range. That is ideally where I want to see it kind of blow everybody out into and then fade off. So that worked uh, perfectly. Not really a, a huge trade, but it added up because it's a buck plus per share, right? So you don't really need, a lot of times you all look and try to get 20, 30,000 shares, but look, if you take five or 10,000 shares, it's it's still a, a solid trade. Um, so, you know, don't always focus on trying to get as much size as you can. That That's what kind of chopped me up a lot last year where, you know, I'm just so used to 2020 and 21 and 22 and getting rewarded for, you know, scale, 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 and bottom drops out and you've got, you know, 10x, 20x your initial size uh, and it all works out. But last year it was more of less liquidity um, and a lot harder to, to, to do that. BPTH, very similar. Um, again, the, the idea here on this BPTH is sort of identifying that channel, the congestion areas, the key levels. So, you know, off this kind of parabolic move, you can kind of tell that 610 to 640 is the key level flushed out nicely. But then we start to get into this sideways price action. Right. And a lot of people sort of anticipating the breakdown getting chopped up over over here in, in this particular channel. Once you can identify a channel, you want to be patient because then you can start to see starts to firm back up. So now we're over that prior level, the highest channel line, blowout move. I'm interested. I'm interested in parabolic moves over the highest level, right? Just like CZOO, just like MTC, just like all these other names. Otherwise, I want to stay away. I want to stay away from all of this. And the only time that I want to start to scale is after we have fail follow from my momentum under VWAP after we've failed multiple times. Otherwise, you're going to end up in a situation where you scale up too much and you end up in a, in a bad spot. And then you're making decisions based off emotions rather than what you should be doing. Um, we had the same kind of situations over here, uh, AGBA, and you can kind of see how, you know, looking left levels, uh, you know, provided value for the short trade, but then also, you know, again over here for the short trade. But as it started to kind of base and break out over and that 150 level became the base and provided value for that long side trade, uh, just like the other name IBRX that we went over. And if you guys don't remember, IBRX was right over here where we start to have um, this secondary move over here and the prior top level became base. So same concept over there is what I'm talking about on this AGBA. And then again, we had nice uh, opportunities here. Look for the channel, look for the congestion. You know, yes, you could be shorting into 310 pushes as long as you're not emotionally attached and it goes to 330s and you, and you panic. Otherwise, best to just wait for, uh, you know, 280s to fail to follow through. And uh, at that point, you start to have a little bit of a, a cleaner trade. Um, the same thing, TIRX. So all of these things should start to look pretty familiar. 
Um, you know, look for the congestion spots. You can kind of see it's not always for me that the top. Yes, I can put a link. Uh, I mean, a, a line right over here at 185. And, um, you know, yes, that that does make sense, too. But for me, I'm always focused more so on where the volume is and uh, where most of the congestion is. So that's the part that uh, I pay more attention to. So, again, if you're trading this front side and you need to stop, best to just wait. Wait for it, fail to follow through, proof at that 140 level. A um, couple others, DJT, kind of see how key lines both on the daily chart um, work on an intraday basis. You can see this was the low, this was the low, and any extension, this is kind of a mean reversion, um, and it ends up you know, kind of going down too far, so it's gonna have a nice snap back, probably goes up further than you think before it kind of hangs out in the middle somewhere. Uh, NVIDIA, we use the same kind of strategy and same thought process uh, for the trades this week. If you guys remember, that was a really nice one. Uh, I wasn't super, super active after that, but again, you've got the, the morning action pre-market, and then you got the push off of open versus those pre-market highs. So, you know, ideal short, say 830, 840s versus the, the 842. Call it three, two, three, four bucks of risk for the potential of what, 10, 20 downside. Um, same thing with SMCI, if you guys remember that trade as well. Um, same sort of situation and looking left and looking for that clear out move. Um, and again, you know, not getting super, super aggressive. You know, when it flushes like this, a lot of times people ruin trades. I'd rather only scale in after we see a rebound, fail to follow through. And the reason for that is because this could be all short sellers. Yes, they're sellers, but they're short sellers. So once things pause and they start to reverse, if it's not actual sellers, then they tend to be pretty thin, right? And they swipe back up. I want to be on the same side as sellers because that's actual supply, real supply. It's not supply that comes out that then you've got emotions attached where people need to you know, cover it. They're going to panic if it goes up too much, right? It's actual sellers that are now out of the position that have added to the supply and the heaviness of the name. That's what I want to see. So for me, you know, yes, reacting to this move is great. Slamming an entry and, and scaling into a winner, not so great, right? I'd rather see it ramp back up, fail to follow through, and then start to scale in from there versus the VWAP level, not just slam into a, a particular move. Uh, MLEC, in the last couple, I've got a, maybe three, four more. But you should start to see the same pattern over and over. It's not rocket science. You know, this is the technical aspect. Obviously, I have some fundamental thoughts, some catalyst thoughts, uh, and other factors that go into decision making. But today, I'm just kind of going over the technical side of things. So if you are a systematic trader, if you are somebody that only knows fundamentals, if you add this to your arsenal, it's going to help you stay out of the, um, you know, some of the the, the crap people get stuck in that are just too uh, focused on the statistics. Well, 90% of the time this works. And then they don't understand, you know, how they can make adjustments uh, along the way uh, with, with situations like this. So again, for, for a move like this, I see a lot of times um, people uh, hammer into the three or two nineties and then they end up getting clipped and, and cover in a panic at three twenties, then do it again, cover in a panic. Um, so, you know, a lot of times I'd rather see two nineties just kind of peek out. If I do trade up in, into this, again, you want to you want to have room for the uh, potential of a, a clear out move, and then 325s gets heavy, and so on and so forth. Otherwise, just wait for 290s, wait for inventory to to be on the same side as you, right? You want the supply to be sellers, not just short sellers. Um, MFI, just to kind of show you like a clear out move. Obviously, we've got this channel. They're kind of putting the top as the supply zone, and 11 is sort of the support. Uh, and it goes all the way to the point where they, you know, end up cracking it. But you can see over here uh, where a lot of times, and, and we've talked about this quite often, so it should, shouldn't be, you know, a surprise that these things exist, right? Um, but, you know, you can see the supply at, at 12. You can see uh, the support at 11. Then it starts to become the top. People start to get a little aggressive. They see the volume. Most of it's probably just wash volume, wash volume again. They finally crack and then everybody chases and they say, all right, it's finally over, you know, hammer in short. And then they swipe it back up to 11s and everybody panics because you guys have seen it. ZJYL, 
CHS, you know, all these ones that go into circuit halts and, uh, you know, literally could break your account. So the only reason I'm talking about MFI right now is because you've got uh, NWGL recently, you have EJH recently, and you have MFI recently. Traders have short-term memories as far as what risk is, you know, and, and they don't, you, they, they forget the risk associated with these types of trades. So the reason I say that is a situation like MNDR, which I'll get into in the scan. But if this circuit's down on Monday, this is no different than my warning. If you guys remember on CHSN, I said the next trade is going to be lethal to short sellers if it does not go down 80%, right? If it does not, there's a good chance that they trap. Everybody right now is so focused because these are working so well and they want to nail the next one. And if MNDR shows the signs of weakness and they flush, you know, 22, 21, whatever, people are going to hammer that because they just saw it three times in a row on three different names. And they're going to forget the risk that they saw with ZJYL. And if you guys remember the day that I warned on CHSN, like the, the that was a Friday, that trade, and, the, and I went over the reasons why I took it versus something that like ZJYL without real, like a big market. Keep that in mind on this. You know, there's they've been walking this up for a while. There's a good chance that they probably want to trap and then maybe do something like SWIN uh, and, and, you know, squeeze out the this next kind of, uh, you know, round of, of, of traders. And maybe, maybe we're going to have a candle like this tomorrow, right? On Monday. And then maybe towards the end of the week, we have some sort of squeeze. And again, maybe it just goes down 80%. That's why these are so risky. But just like I warned on the CHSN day, right? If you guys remember, this day was a great trade, great opportunity. And the reasons for that, I went over in that video. But that same time, I warned about ZJYL and the risk associated with that one. So again, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, it doesn't mean that it has to, but I just know that everybody's going to be chopping at the bit, waiting to get the next one. And they forget just how risky these trades are. Don't put your career at risk. If you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't even matter. Even, even if you know what you're doing, all it takes is one. So just remember that. Um, and then last couple STI, just a couple points that I wanted to make. Uh, I went over this on the last webinar, but you know, 232 was the low here, right? So a lot of times people put so much focus on what the prior low was, what the prior level was, that if it breaks, it's bull, it's 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 over, it's bearish, it's done. Um, but a lot of times they just want to clear out anybody that's price sensitive, anybody that is like that, right? So if they're gonna ramp it back up almost a double off this level, they want to make sure that anybody that's price sensitive that's looking to sell sells right so they actually broke that prior level of support just enough flush everybody out and then immediately covered recovered right how many times do we see this on an intraday basis on the one minute chart five minute chart whatever you use right this is the same thing only on a daily goes 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 flush everybody out catch it next leg up right so just keep that in mind and then the last piece the last one that i wanted to go over it's just because i haven't done sunday video in a while uh, but these are all things that, you know, I've, I've walked through all these levels that I went over, IBRX, CLSK, CZU, AIRE, everything you've seen on Twitter over the last week or two. Uh, you've seen in chat ahead of time. So all I'm doing is just kind of putting it together for you and showing you sort of the why. And hopefully you can, you know, apply that. The last piece was this why is a trade and why I was long biased this day. Um, and, and really the, the key is. Anytime we have these recent reverse splits, now this volume's wrong. Uh, for whatever reason, DAS doesn't um, doesn't calculate it correctly after reverse split. But what I look for is a lot of times these reverse splits split, and then they continue to just fade off on low volume. It might be seven thousand shares, ten thousand shares, twenty thousand shares, right? And at the end of the day, it might be a two week span. It drops 60 percent on five hundred to a million shares, and then that day such as Wiza, uh, when it was opening up, it was trading at uh, two, I remember it being, I think, 290. And I kept on warning about soaking, not 290, soaking 290s in, in this uh, false kind of top at three. And when you think about it, 
we're literally at 52 week lows and then we took another 60% drop. And now they've churned and remember it, it dropped 60% on a million shares. And now it's up 100%. We look at it and we're like, man, this thing's up 100%. It, it should fade a little bit, right? Statistics show that, you know, gappers of X, blah, 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 blah. No, that's not the case always. And you have to understand which ones are the setups that potentially will have that outlier move. And so this one fit that. And I had compared it to uh, Watt way back in the day, which uh, was right after reverse split. Very similar situation. Um, and I, it's actually like years ago. Uh, that's just how my mind works. But you can kind of see that it had the support faded off for like a month. And this was all on like maybe 2 million shares total, like 20K, 30K a day. And then this day, it just blew everybody out. And it's since reverse split. So these numbers are not accurate. But same kind of uh, process there. I think there was one more end tech, maybe. I don't remember. Um, but uh, anyway, same situation, same kind of uh, opportunity. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, kind of re re hit that. Why is it move? So anytime you have a reverse split that then drops 50, 60 percent, that then gaps up on volume, uh, you know, 100 percent plus, just look left. And if it's still under 52 week lows, you know, as of like a week ago, be careful, be careful, because that means that literally everybody is shorting because it's up 100, 150 percent. They think it should go down. Meanwhile, they're shorting literally at the 52 week low. Right. And if they're not selling paper that day, it's only going one way. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that's about it. So let's get into the main watches. Uh, I'm going to go over the main watches. You guys can check through, click through on the blog to check out the continuation and the failed follow through. I don't want to make this too long. Uh, but uh, as always, I'm not a financial advisor. These are not buy or sell recommendations. And this is for educational and informational purposes only. So this uh, AGBA is definitely one that I'm going to be watching. Uh, this to me is a very bearish candle. However, you want to be, you know, sometimes when, when I say things like this, people say, oh, he's going to be right either way. I, I'm not saying this to be right. I'm saying this to have the opportunity to, to react both ways, right? I don't care if I'm right or wrong. I care about being able to nail the trade. And so if this gaps up, say 220, 230s, I'm interested in the fade versus that 250 level, right? We've had two clear out kind of moves on the daily and there's obviously been pressure. There's actually been pressure for three days in a row. That also can train people to keep doing the same thing and end up on the wrong side. We just had that on IBRX where it trained people short the gap, short the gap. Yes, you're doing it right. Great job. And then bam, T plus three day or T plus two day, uh, they squeeze everybody out, right? So you want to be cautious of, of, of that on a, something like AGBA because they could be doing the same thing. For now, I'm assuming that it's going to stay heavy and I'm assuming we can go back down towards, uh, you know, all pops back towards 150s in the, in the near term. However, if we start to base, if we don't gap up tomorrow, we start to base, consolidate and uh, set up for this 250 trigger, I want to be aware of that. That's a long trade for me. Um, so anyway, there's that. There's Snap, Snap Pet Earnings Report. Uh, you know, you can clearly see that it's stuck in a um, in a in a trend here. And the first time that I um, did this, I, I put these lines on. Uh, as I said, this is the second time I'm recording, but it took me about one second, right? So my point when I was uh, saying it the first time was, it takes you one second to identify this channel. So just make sure that you don't put yourself in a situation where you're gonna exhaust yourself into 15 or exhaust yourself into 1380s, right? Because those levels need to be tested. It's no different than what I was talking about on STI on the daily, right? If you put yourself in a position to bail in a panic at this level, well, guess what? You just bailed at the low in a, in a panic, and then you just missed out on that on that double. So in that same kind of uh, point, same kind of concept, just don't put yourself in a position to be forced to make choices at 15 and at 1380s. Hopefully that makes sense. But ideally, a gap up, you know, a gap up over this level, 15, 15, 20s blowout versus the 1550s would be ideal. Um, gap down and, and uh, you know, morning shove for a fade. I'd want to assume 1380s is going to congest. There's going to be a little bit of congestion around that level. If it stays heavy, I might want to scale, right, for more failed follow through. IBRX, uh, again, just to hit home. 
you know, use your levels to your advantage. This is the prior top, fails, fails, all fails, 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 comes back, consolidates around this prior level of resistance, consolidates, and now the resistance becomes support. This is the check-in. Checks in, consolidates, goes, right? So again, for me, IBRX, ideally the 758 blowout, um, 8850, you know, anything is, is fine with me. Um, and then fail follow. So ideally gap up parabolic. Uh, otherwise, weak open, watch, potential long. Uh, if I am shorting a, a big gap up, I'm looking to cover. I'm not looking to, to marry this thing and think that it has to fail. It might, it, in my eyes, it's probably delayed 15 to 30 days for some sort of big unwind. I think eventually we'll see constant pressure, constant sell off. But for right now, uh, in my opinion, they rotated out all the retail longs that did the run up and they caught some shorts on the wrong side. Now we need to let that short side exhaust and then we have a nice, uh, nice trade back down, I think. Um, so that's about it. I did have, um, you know, DJT on, on radar too. obviously 45 is sort of like a guide, uh, again, goes up further than you think goes down further than you think, and it's going to rebound further than you think, right? Everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody has the same thoughts, right? So if everybody's thinking the same thing, everybody has the same thoughts. What can you do different than the rest, right? And that's just being a little bit more patient. Let this thing blow out. Pause. You know, when it's the obvious short, just pause. Wait. Make sure that it's confirming your thoughts. A lot of times you'll see that it won't, right? You want to see that it's actual sellers that are in there, not just short sellers. So um, that's about it. I do think we'll have, you know, some action on ACB and, and CGC. You can see some pretty good uh, exhaustion candles here, you know, where it cleared out. This is sort of what I'm looking for on charts that kind of grind, grind, grind. You want to see them exhaust everybody out and then sell pressure come back. Same thing happened with ACB, right? Um, when you start to get into this mode of just slow, steady grind, the only way to end that is by clearing out, you know, one side or the other, whether if, if it's a long and it's slowly, steadily fading, you want to see it flush, right? And, and come back We call that dip and rip. And the same thing we want to see is a, a clear out. We want to see a parabolic move and, you know, kind of sit back, clears out the other side, sits back and you want to see confirmation of, of pressure. So anyway, that's it. I hope you guys have a uh, good rest of your weekend. Um, and uh, we will see you guys in the room on Monday. I do not plan ahead and do uh, winners this week. So we'll pick double winners next week. Leave a comment again. Make sure you post what you want to see on Sunday video. Our, our goal is to always make this thing better. And, uh, you know, make this, uh, you know, something that, that you're always looking forward to every single Sunday. It's been many, many years. And, um, you know, I appreciate all of you guys that do watch this. I do hope that you like uh, the new team of uh, traders that we've kind of added. They've always been in the room, uh, but uh, just uh, haven't really showcased all of their, their knowledge at the capacity they, they are now. So um, anyway, have a great rest of the weekend and uh, we'll see you guys Monday.